Welcome back to iHeartRadio, So Bad It's Good. Today, we have guests that I have been wanting to talk to for years now. And the funny thing is, the reason I wanted to talk to them for so many reasons, I mean, one is because they're still together after a traumatic event in their lives. And I always, you know, I love love. But also, uh, they were in a show I call it a show, but it was a docu-series called The Vow on HBO. And we were all so in our bubbles during the pandemic that I was obsessed with this thing. I mean, I felt like I was joining in the cult with them each week. I was waiting for new. And then there was a competing series, I think, on Showtime. And then I read Sarah's book, Scarred. And then I was just digging deeper and deeper. And then I found out they have a podcast. And their podcast is going to knock you off your ass. I'm telling you, I don't usually listen to podcasts. Podcast because I don't listen to reality show podcasts because that's what I do, but I listen to their podcasts. And in season five alone, they've already talked to Eckhart Tolle. I mean, they've talked to, I mean, they even made gymnastics fascinating for me last week. I mean, <laughs> Eckhart Tolle, they, I mean, they, they had Rachel Evan Wood, who I loved her documentary on HBO Max as well. Of course, the second season of The Vow is out now. And I'm so curious to talk to them about all of this because the first couple episodes, like I told you guys, I was really questioning where we were headed with all of this in the second season. But more importantly, I just want to recommend them. And I know my listeners will love their podcast. Each one of these episodes are so uh, crafted so well. The conversations are so hard hitting, but they're told by these two people who you feel like they're your friends. You feel like they take you through this. They walk you through really tough waters. And I think it's such a great, um, it's it's such a great thing to look out for in what uh, to look out for in a cult. If you're in a cult, all of these things. I've already monopolized three minutes of this conversation, so let us get into the actual. Uh, I am just so proud to welcome Sarah and Nippy from a little bit culty. Welcome to the show. Wow, what a what an introduction! I don't think I've I've heard one quite so effusive. I'm I'm honored. I, that was I you guys great. Thank you. But and by the way, I've stolen Nippy's. Ice. <laughs> Ice. It's catching. New, it's catching. Uh, if you it's listen iconic. to the podcast, you'll know that. Yeah. Um, uh, listen, but I, before we get into anything, I have to apologize because we originally had a date to do this podcast. Nippy and I have never missed an interview. And this ha we were supposed to talk to you as we were moving here to Atlanta and it just got missed. And I, ha I apologize for that. But also, I need you to know that in preparation for this, I was like, oh, I can no, get don't. No, no, don't I'm going to get organized and I was gonna, I'm going to listen to one of his episodes. So I know the vibe and the tone. And I happened to listen to <laughs> one out of the 560 uh, something episodes. The one episode where you oh say, no. guys, it's so weird. I was supposed to interview these two people. They just didn't show up. Like, what the <laughs> hell? And I was like, I think that might have been us. That I think it, it was. And and by the way, <laughs> and this is how this is why when I watch stuff about Nexium and stuff yeah. like that was that I was like, I would totally join that place. Like they, yeah. there are times in my life where I'm like, I would have gone there immediately because Appreciate I need that. you. Nobody. It, it's one of those things. So I then I was like, I took that personally. I was like, oh my god, they realize they think I'm just a reality show podcast, no. which I totally understand. But I'm just so thrilled to speak to you guys. And the Nixium story is it weird that I look at it or that we look at cults now as part of pop culture? Like it, it's gone past the time of just even being cults. <laughs> we look at it as entertainment value almost i mean i think it depends on the doc there's some docs that are very salacious and just like this guy is so gross and bad and that's one type of documentary which is pop culture-y popcorn <laughs> literally and then there, i think the vow is in a slightly different category with some other amazing um document documentaries that we can talk about that's a little different and i think brings people on a journey like you said allowed you to go wow that that would have drawn me in which is important because our whole mission right now is to give people the fodder and the red flag so they can say and know for themselves and put that little tool in their tool belt and go, oh, that feeling I have when I get invited to this thing and everyone's making me feel so good and feel so special. It might be true. Maybe they're a good group of people or it could be that it's, a, a, they're, you know, they're, for example, love bombing me and they're going to eventually invite me to something else, which might be more nefarious or whatever. So yeah. I think it yeah. depends on the, on the show. What do you think? I, I would also add, you know, I think as a filmmaker, when you're doing something on something as salacious with the salacious content that we had, you understand that the reason this is news is because of salacious content when you're making it. And the easy documentary to make would be like, just capitalize on that and make this guy bad. And you have your echo chamber yeah, yeah. of people who are just going to reinforce that behavior. But if you want to do one that, you know, if you do a documentary, you want it to 
shift people's perspective and, and you have film as a medium to do it, you want to leave them with the impression of what you just said. Because the person, at least for me, the person that says, oh, I would never fall for that. I'm not susceptible to that. In a lot of ways is a candidate for that because the belief that they can't fall for something that is indeed their blind yeah. spot, right? So if you can set it up in the way that you can and go, yeah, there's a point in my life where I've been open to this, or yeah, you know, I could have used something like that at one point, then you know, those are the potential hooks of you being susceptible to something like that. And if the documentary filmmaker is smart enough and sensitive enough to do that, then I think it's a project that can open up lanes for people to help other people. And if it goes into the pop world where I think a lot right. of people might be, might be susceptible to it, it does something good. And then there's a, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's space for both. Um, uh, and speaking about that, cause he's, you even talk about one of your episodes I was listening to about line bending, which Keith Ranieri yeah. actually taught you about where it's kind of just slowly, you were using the example of, uh, can you babysit my kid? You don't ask him, can you babysit my kid for the whole night? You say, Hey, Hey, I got to go out for an errand. Can you watch my kid for an hour? And then you, when you're out go, Hey, you know what? It's actually an emergency. It's going to be a couple hours and you're more susceptible to watch that child for the night. But Keith actually taught you this. And this was before, and this was considered, a good tactic, but you're a good technique, but you're actually in this thing. So you don't think of it as abnormal at all when you're in it. Correct. Well, there, there were lots of things that were abnormal and so many red flags <laughs> from the beginning, <laughs> that, the, but the, 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 the volleyball mainly, the, right? So many, yeah. but, but yeah. the problem was, is that the very first thing that we accepted, if you continue to go past like the first day is that you're going to feel uncomfortable and we're here to work on our issues like you do in therapy. If anyone's been to therapy, you know, it's not comfortable to talk about like your insecurities, your flaws, or your fears or whatever. So you accept that. And then when you're things that you're uncomfortable about, you're directed to look internally as to what's wrong with you or what's your own. This is a next in turn disintegration that you'd consider that. Like, for example, if I feel uncomfortable with having to bow to somebody and call them Vanguard which is <laughs> totally weird now, obviously in retrospect, yeah. knowing what I know now, I would never do it. But if I were like, I feel uncomfortable with that. I've never met this guy. He's not in the room. Who's Vanguard? What do we call him? Vanguard? Like, what is that? Someone say, well, it's, it's a title. And if you feel uncomfortable, you might want to look at like why you don't want feel trip, feel like you can pay tribute to what somebody's built. And maybe wow. you have like an issue around honoring that maybe some jealousy or authority <clears throat> issues, which may also be true. Like I may have an issue with authority. But it doesn't mean that it's not weird that he we call No, it. I mean, right. I think that's why it's so great in that first season, especially that it is kind of you, uh, we see it through your eyes and you kind of take us through it. And we, I feel like the audience is, and that's why I think your podcast is successful and should, everybody should listen to it because you really do trust, I trust you guys. Like we see it through your eyes and that's why it's important to see that it's not just these insane people joining up for Nixium at the time. Like you really thought you were walking around with the secrets for a happier lifestyle. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yep. that's it. Been directly, well, yeah. it was more yeah. of the tools and the questions for a happier lifestyle. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> how that got abused to go back to the Sarah's example is, you know, we were putting on sashes and bowing. There was a lot of metaphors and a lot of examples that were used to minimize what the actual abuse was. Right. So you didn't feel abused. So, for example, if you were uncomfortable with the sashes, another text might be like, well, have you ever done karate or been to a dojo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you take your shoes off. You do that. And so for me, it was like day one, I wasn't really into it, but I was like, if I want to be that guy, I'm only going to be here five days. <laughs> right. Well, See, but, right. But that's I, in, my mind, I love, I love in my mind, in my mind, I was there five days. I wasn't going to do any more. I'll bow for them for a couple of days and then I'll do a little more curriculum and slowly and surely. There you I go. I love that. That's yeah. You're happens. like, I'm not going to be an a-hole in that first week. Right. I'll play. Yeah. yeah. Like I still, that's, that is such a, a great way to put it. And it kind of blows my mind uh, as you get further into it though. And also, could you speak about falling in love during this, you know, like, I mean, you are falling in love with each other yet you're falling in love with not, I mean, these teachings as well. And these self-help tools. I mean, is there some kind of thing where you're speaking about, um, these self-help techniques while you're falling in love? I mean, well, the show does. We, somewhat, I think we were, she, we were she didn't a have a chance. Anomaly. No, no, we it, were, she didn't we, have a chance. <laughs> 
Listen, hey, Nippy, Nippy, Nippy farted in class once. Come on, that's not even a. Nippy was the frat boy that everybody wanted to. Yeah, you but know. I was I was also the guy who said that what everyone was thinking too. So yeah, it was see, see of, I think my theory on Nippy too is this yeah. is like I was a theater actor in high school. It's those guys that get injured in football in your their senior <laughs> year, and then they go over to theater and they end up being weirdly good in the school musical, and then all the theater girls love that dude for the rest of their lives. You except, just nailed. You just except totally I didn't. Nailed it. Except I didn't get injured. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did get injured at some point. Yeah, every, everyone, been, everyone gets I injured. Would, everyone I would have been so injured. mad if you were at my high school. Yeah. Um, no, what I just no, you and I would have been that. laughing like fucking crazy in theater <laughs> class because I was also that guy. <laughs> no, it's, I mean that's yeah. the, the documentary does this great thing of that. That's what I love is that it shows you the friendships that were made. It shows you the laughter that was had. It shows you that. By the way, I you you were even talking about in this last episode how mind blowing it was to see Nancy realize in real time as she's going through these things mm -hmm. of what was happening during like the modules and how Keith treated her. And I just think like you see all these friendships being made, but then now you're years later and you're then having to uh, put under a microscope every little moment. And that just must be a mind fuck on top of a mind fuck. Yeah. Yeah. People ask us how we're doing and, and it's like, generally we're okay. But with this, we're, we're reliving not only our trauma, but our friends trauma, which actually was way worse than ours. You know, some of the people that we're learning about, we got off season, easy season five, I mean, there, you know, I mean, people are still dancing outside of his cell, right? I mean, like there's, he still has, I mean, the, the one gentleman that they, the Tourette's episode, which was very powerful this season, mm -hmm. showing how to, to deal with Tourette's. And he, I mean, I don't know at this point where he's at, but he's, they're calling Keith, like, what do you need? We got you. And he really refuses to disavow Nixium. And, and, you know, when you see that, what are your, what are your feelings? Cause you knew this gentleman. He was at our wedding. Yeah. It's not just that we knew him. I mean, like, he was a good friend of ours. That's really my, hard, really. my response to that is I think you're seeing people who haven't reconciled their trauma and while it, while it's somewhat frustrating to watch because sometimes Sarah, Mark, myself are on the other end of it because they want to blame us for whatever. I think it's important to note that um, they're stuck in a, their own prison themselves. And yeah. Sarah and I, uh, Sarah and I could say they were all friends of ours. We were all friends of them up until June 1st, 2017, when we both made the decision that this wasn't good. So all of a sudden we went from like heroes in the organization to villains because we changed our premise and we Which pivoted to tough as hell for you guys you know, to go through like just it, it, day to day. Hard. it was, was hard. but we had tougher things to deal with at the time and then yeah. you know a, a friend of ours said something to us he's like you're gonna have to walk over dead bodies on the way out of this thing <clears throat> until people just come and wake up for you but I, I i've said this and i've said this every time if we could press a button and all those people could go back and start living lives that were thriving and and get out of this we would because I know they're all good people, but I think they're tap dancing with a line right now where they're starting to get really vitriolic and they're starting to get really toxic and that behavior starting to come out in a lot of ways and it's directed at people and whatever goodwill or sympathy they may have built up previously is going to get ignored or it's just, it's not going to manifest well for them if they don't make the pivot in life. And I don't know, and we don't, Sarah and I collectively don't know how this plays out. And nor, nor is it your job, but you do have to study it because you were a yeah. part of it. And now you actually reach, uh, you know, millions of people throughout these podcasts where like, isn't that life is so weird that way. <laughs> My crazy. acting teacher always went to be like, you know, you got to go the direction the river's going, you know, and like, yeah. I never thought it would be talking about reality and pop culture like that. It was never like I knew I was a geek as a kid from this stuff, but I was like, hey, I, I got an episode of The Office or I got an episode of How I Met Your Mother. And I was like yeah. doing my, you know, but then this happened and it was like, wow, this finally doors are opening. Isn't this bizarre for you guys in that yes. you're like, actually, but you are helping people. But at the same time, this is what works for you guys. Honestly, this is opening the doors. It's bizarre. Like, you know, if, if you, and if you read my book, you'll know this, that I, I truly do love to help people. And that's been like my MO since I was quite young. And obviously we bet on the wrong horse with Nexium, but like this lane, a is so much more rewarding and B because of the podcast, there's, there's no limit to it. We've, I think we are at like a hundred thousand episodes of uh, downloads an episode. 
you know, whereas 17,000 total went through Nexium, most of whom I've never met, but like at any given time, there was 300 people at the annual retreat. So like mm-hmm. 300 to 500 people were active at any given time. And you are a lot of people. No, it's not. No. The, but but when you're in that bubble, it must have felt like the world. It must have oh, felt yeah. like this is yeah. my whole universe. And th- that's the whole thing. Like, we're losers. We, were, we thought we were we were th- we were throwing rocks at tanks if we thought we were changing the world. Like there wasn't any real tangible uh, evidence that we were changing the world. We just thought <clears throat> because we we're endorsed by some people that were credible, we might have a curriculum that could we were laying the foundation for bringing it to stuff bring it into schools uh, and stuff like that. I mean, but sometimes no. though, I don't, those talent shows, that was when I was like, Oh my God, I, I would get nervous. And like, I would even, and do you watch any footage now and ever cringe? Or do you oh, put yeah. yourself back in that most moment and go like, <laughs> but most, those, most of the those talent shows with Keith in well, the front row. And I was like, what, what is going on here? Do you want to hear something really cringy that I've never yes. shared with anybody? Yes. We sang every center would do like a tribute to Keith and like they'd sing a song or whatever. One year we sang R. Kelly's world's greatest. Or Gotta go. You race. guys have a good, I'm have sorry. a good rest of your life. Who did we that? Sang an R. Kelly song to we Keith? were singing. Mm, I made it. Mm, I'm the world's greatest. You're the little <laughs> oh, ray of hope. When, oh, back no. and we, when you say we, who, who are you? Not you. Yeah, thank not you. you. But I remember it. Thinking like I, I know I haven't shared that with anyone. This is top. Is it okay to laugh at these things? Like yes. I used to make I used to make volleyball meme when the original vow. I you guys know my silly memes, but I used to make memes of Keith with the volleyball, and then I would be like, you know, the front of the Christmas tree is Val Kilmer and Top Gun with the volleyball, and the back of the tree is Keith. And I just it's so fascinating to watch that footage of like you know everybody just hovering around this man. And I guess the vow does a good job of explaining a lot of what the magic was but i still the one thing that is left out for me is still this man seems to come off every time i see like it's hard to it really see is. the charm and all of that stuff in retrospect i wasn't a part of this it's really hard well, because i'm like this douche chills everywhere sorry yes. to use that no, no no it's fine it's we can laugh very, we have to laugh it's very yeah. appropriate I, I will say this a lot of the footage that is being shown right now i would say a majority of the people have never seen and they probably didn't see a lot of keith in that form when there, I was mean, kissing. Like, Ouch. there was kissing yeah. with lauren solzman there was kissing. Yeah. Like, i was like how i i thought this was a hidden relationship yet we're having footage of this I, shown and i think that i mean that's what's shocking to us we don't know where the footage came from so there's two things going on there's this inner circle so that's not mark no, that no, was, no, that no. all the footage from season oh. five or season two, sorry, is um we just found out was found in his like garage or whatever. That was so he had asked Danny, the one who's gonna be in the episode that airs tonight. She's the one who was locked in a room. Um, she was asked her assignment was basically to film everything, like him behind closed doors. So that all that footage was found for season two. So we didn't see any of that. Like even when we saw Keith meet Allison in episode one or season one. We were like, what? Like, if I'd seen that, I think I would have been repulsed. But with that, that was like private, right? So a lot um, of private stuff you didn't see. Yeah, it's it's really mind blowing footage this past episode, especially because they, the, to the filmmakers' credit, I was really kind of starting to get upset because I felt they were praising Keith too much, and I got this really weird protective vibe over the survivors of Nixium. But then this last episode, then it slowly builds, and it's why you see that's really good that this like last week's episode, not the one that tonight, really just put it all out on the table in terms of the horrors, the abuse, the pushing that boundary so. So far, and this is not just for Keith, but you guys study cults now and have is what goes through, or can we even can we even assume what was going through Keith's mind or any of these cult leaders' mind when they push these boundaries? Because they have to know what's wrong because they teach this and this and ethics. Ethics keeps getting brought up. What do you think goes through his mind or any of these people's minds? Uh, Sarah, do you want to? Uh, <laughs> I mean, so it's a, lo- it's a, lo- it's a great question. It's a great, a great question. question. It's a loaded you, question. I can answer know. it. Two for, ways. Yeah. Is it different for each person? Well, each cult so, leader is it different? There's two, I'll, there's I'll paraphrase, two main tracks. Go, yeah, yeah, I'll go. paraphrase from, from one episode we did with Dan Shaw. <clears throat> um, He's a narcissist expert. Yeah. These people don't have a conscience. Right. So it's very difficult for you and I to project into someone who doesn't have a morality or conscience, but they understand that most people do. Right. And so they elicit 
people's morality to navigate it and then blind bend is your is your morality really your morality is this bad is this bad and they find that boundary and then he trying to talks you out of it now one of the things that dan shaw said was there's nothing these people don't feel entitled to right and and that's evident in, in keith's behavior he feels like if it's there it's his and he will go after your wife he'll go after all these things and he'll try and do it in a way where it looks consensual so i think uh keith's particular thing is he's a sex addict yeah i think he has an itch itch that he cannot or a control Not a addict, power yeah, addict, I, yeah, which is know. power. I think it's money, sex. But but, but there, but there definitely was a sex component yeah. to it. Yeah. I mean, it oh, definitely yeah. is power. But that was what was surprising too was that, and you're talking about ethics and stuff like that. So he's playing off, you know knowing that we all have some sort of ethics or morals, but at the same time, he does not have to follow those rules and he doesn't have it. So he's able to use that yes. to push those lines and to play off people. Cause that was the thing. Even I started to feel sympathy for Lauren Solzman, which I had previously, I hadn't previously though mm-hmm. I was, and I, and I was very untrusting of Nancy as well. And, you know, it was very interesting hearing her story from her perspective and the modules and then feeling like, well, I felt like very talked down to by Keith all the time. And it was very interesting to hear that perspective because I was so rushed to jump on how dare all of these people, you know, and then you really Mm -hmm. hear their story and go, oh, she was in love with him. She thought she was going to have his baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, my perspective has totally shifted on Lauren. It's we've been out for five years and I went from extreme anger and betrayal to forgiveness. And I would totally, if she arrived on the doorstep right now, I'd hug her and we'd cry. It's like, absolutely. But it's, that's if we could get true. that on the podcast, that would be great. If we could, <laughs> yeah, I'd uh, love to film that. Um, I just want to mention too. Yeah. Uh, sign up for their Patreon and their link is going to be in the show description because they're going to go further into their, uh, I think view of this season of the vow, but it is worth signing up for. So I wanted to mention that before I forgot. Appreciate as that, well. Ryan. We do um, fun things there and lots of goodies and bonus. No, isn't it? Random I stuff. loved when I listened to your isn't podcasting a weird experience just it's even so before, but before cults, because, you know, I was listening to one of your episodes, the Q and a one, and you were like apologizing. Like I didn't get back to this and I, I miss things every day. I don't know. I, I miss DMS. I miss, and like people take it really personally. And you're like, no, I'm just an idiot. Like I just, there's nothing, but, it's, but then you're building a community and yeah. it's, it's, it's not a cult, but you're trying to do it the right way and not right. make it you know, it's like, it's very interesting. Well, you also want to deliver too. You want to have yeah. a, a product and, and a product is, you know, fortunately for us, a way we can inform people. It, uh, yeah. You're definitely informing people yeah. this season alone. Like I was saying, and this is, I just wanted to throw some names out there to get, uh, well, first off, our season six already has to be in the work. Cause I think you recorded all of season five. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're not stopping. There's cult content for the next eight. Yes. Thousand years. Unfortunately there's, that's what I was. <laughs> Cause I was like, Oh my God, I want an episode on this. And I want an episode on oh, this. What do you want? Tell us. Well, I do want more on, uh, the Lori Vallow story. Um, I, I, as that, as that get, are you remind me? Lori Vallow is the one that, uh, Chad Daybell and they ended up murdering their spouses allegedly and then their kids. But it was based on Chad could tell Chad was, um, Chad Daybell was a prophet that could tell if people like what zombie level they were. And so if he said they're like zombie level six, they had to be, cause there was only going to be like 3,300 survivors according to his prophecies. Of course. And so, course. yeah, I mean, it's all makes sense when I say it out loud to you guys, I'm sure you totally understand, <laughs> but Lori Vallow was like a normal, like, I mean, she, she was a, uh, a great mom at one point. She was, she was started in the Mormon religion. And then this was a, a break off sect from the Mormon religion. And it is, they do a, a two-part docu-series on Netflix that I think, I mean, by the way, Netflix, Netflix needs to hire you guys just to host a show. Like I got to imagine, like, is that in the works? Cause that my thing. I was like, you guys have great voices, but you gotta, you also kind of look decent, like <laughs> uh, not nippy, but maybe you, you yeah, Sarah, nippy but, like, is like little, dude. I mean, is there going to be a TV component to this? Because I Working would love it. for you guys to walk us through this, even in a visual format, if that's possible. I, that's a great I love idea. that I'm asking nicely. I'm like, yeah. could you please for me? Uh, okay. it. So but Lori you, Dallow, yes. you don't really know. No, it's on our radar, but we haven't done a deep dive. So what we tend to do is we keep a running list of all the groups. And then when we get like multiple requests, um, like right now, One Taste just came out, the docuseries about One Taste. Have you watched that yet? 
Not yet. No, okay, it's on so my that's, list though. That's on orgasms and there's like stroking of the yeah. uterus <laughs> as a part of this. Yeah. So okay, we, it's and, a family yeah. show, yeah. Sarah. We, we, know, we, we know how it works. <laughs> yeah. So we Yeah. So some some of us actually don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was uh I went to college, our, sir. I know. So, <laughs> so that was been on our list for a long time. But now that the docuseries out, like we get 10 requests a day. So that like we try to prioritize based on, you know, what's in the zeitgeist and what what's interesting to people and also like if there's legislature, you know, or different, you know, legal things going on, we try to keep it current. But um, and then we then we don't do a deep dive until we have somebody to interview because it's just too much to keep in my head. And I mean, it blew yeah. me away. You're I mean, how you're getting Eckhart Tolle. I mean, like I grew I, I read that dude's book. I'm like that. By the way, I, I was I, I used to teach at an acting studio in Los Angeles, and you, some people called it a cult, actually, which was so funny which because, one? because we, were, we might have heard it was, of it. it was, uh, Leslie Kahn and company, and we were just okay. making vi- we were making vision boards and stuff. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. it was like you know we we would do scene work and stuff, but you know you followed what Leslie said, and she right. got you work. She taught you like basic sitcom techniques, and she was truly amazing. But it was funny that that word gets thrown around so easily now when it's like okay, how do we well. First off, did you watch The Deep End with Teal Swan? Oh, yes. We did two oh, episodes yeah. on that. Two one, episodes, yeah. yes. Yeah. What is your opinion? Because I talked to the director of that, and he got John. hit really hard by Teal yeah. Swan. Yeah, John Casper. Yeah. You, uh, you guys interviewed him as well. I yeah, yes. yeah. 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 Um, what is your opinion? Because that was a thing where all of her followers then – by the time I talked to him, you could tell he was – he's like, I'm working on another documentary. Oh, like, no. This he got is, slammed. I mean – you know, when I just you were talking earlier about when they get vitriolic uh, in terms of even potential Nexium followers still mm-hmm. that deep in the Teal Swan, you must have had a lot of recognition in that docu series. Well, you mean in terms of their their followers freaking out and your experience? Well, yeah. just your experience and Teal, like what was like the Teal and Keith? Like it seemed like there were similarities there as well. I mean, there, there, with almost every leader, there's like, wow, Keith did that, Keith did that, Keith did that. With her, you know, she's, a, you know, obviously she's a woman. There's very few. There's like only five so far that we're aware of women. But I mean, in terms of the ones that we've done research on, Teal's one of them, and she's one of the few current uh, female cult leaders. And I, you know, it's Nippy and I kind of aren't really totally on the same page about whether or not. Like I'm a little bit more woo woo. I do believe in some spiritual things and people can potentially like have psychic abilities. I do believe in energy healing and things like that. He doesn't as much. (laughs) So I do believe that it's possible that she could have that. But I also think my opinion that she's incredibly narcissistic and is her own trauma wound and enjoys holding power over people. And it's the same thing. It's like she had a mini Nexium. She had a following. I think the impulse to have a following is is the red flag. Also- The difference, one of the things that she did is anything that you can't question um, with certain constraints to reality, and I have to take your word that you see colors, you see energy, and you see chakras, and there's no system in place for me to go, okay, where, how? I just have to take your word for it, and then they're dogmatic about it when you question it, as opposed to, look, take it for what you want, but this is what I think I can do, and if it works for you, great. That's a different approach. Um, I will say Teal did subject herself to scrutiny a little bit by having the camera around and didn't try to control the narratives all the time. So that tells me she's just more arrogant than diabolic like Keith is. Yeah. Well, that, that's, yeah. that's so interesting. I talk about this with, I talk about Real Housewives all the time, which is like a whole Bravo franchise. And these ladies, their egos, it's their egos that put them on TV because they think mm-hmm. they're going to come off amazing. And then yeah. they come off like cuckoo bananas sometimes. And then they complain about that. And then they start trying to self-edit and stuff. But I was like, wait, there's a show it- about housewives? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Un- <laughs> unfortunately, there or fortunately for me, there is. Um, but like, I've, I noticed that with some of these cult leaders, I'm like, yeah. their ego what, why would you ever agree to having a camera on these things if not for a gigantic ego, like a gigantic saying, I am a star, which I think then goes against actually helping people in the long run. She's a gigantic <clears throat> ego. And also the, the, she puts, it's just so ripe for abuse because anything she says could be like, well, I'm psychic. Like, no, your parents abused you. And I know that cause I'm psychic. Like it's just that's totally crazy to me. And that fact that she, yeah, like Nippy said, no one can say, wait a second, that's not right. And then if you do, then you're like on the outs or you're shunned. Like the check boxes for what makes a cult are all there. And I want to just go back to something you said earlier about um, like, you know, 
the, the 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 lane that we're in and then we're our goal is not to be like that's a call you're a call or whatever it's yeah. like, what, what's you get happening? the cult seal of approval yeah. yeah yeah it's like what's 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 happening in this group even if it's just like some fitness thing that you take and it's totally fine but like you feel ashamed do you feel like you feel like bad about yourself if you miss a class in a way that's like unhealthy, then just don't go. It's not, you're, you'd be like, that's a cult and I have to leave. But like, it's a tactic of manipulation. Well, yeah, was that because you're going to be on, was it Bren, uh, Glendon Coyle's podcast? Yes. Uh, or you were, I, and, I, and I've done it, but hasn't aired yet. Yeah. No, yeah. but I, I, I think you would mention that of just like, don't do it. If you, if there is like this, if, 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 if you don't want to do something, don't do it. Don't yeah. feel pressured into these situations. Um, uh, I wanted to talk about what is the mother of all cults to you guys? Is it Scientology? Is it, I was noticing some of the same verbiage that Keith was using in terms of ethics, uh, as when I've like watched these, read the Scientology books and documentaries, is there crossover? And were you guys ever in competition with Scientology where you'd be like, F them, we got the real deal over here. Like, I didn't know if there was competition within these. The competition was more with Landmark, not Landmark. Scientology. Landmark yeah. forums. I went to yeah. one of those with a friend where, the, and then you get talked to into trying to join. And luckily yes. I was broke and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You dodged a bullet there. Uh, we haven't done an episode on that because they're very litigious, but in my opinion, it's the exact same as Nexium minus the branding and the harem. But in terms of all the other stuff, like manipulation tactics, making you feel not good about yourself and very similar as landmark and asked people who created that trained in Scientology. I believe Keith studied Scientology when I was in Nexium, I, I knew what Scientology was, but I didn't know much about it. And I remember when we were still in and Tom Cruise was jumping on the couch and going clear came out. And my, my thought was sort of like how I felt about us. It's like, okay, what about like, so he's happy. Like why? It's not my, it's not my business. If that works for him, it looks very like, natural. Him jumping yeah. on the couch. Yeah. I'm like, and yeah. here I am, I'm happy and people judge me. Like, so I yeah. kind of thought, leave them alone, leave us alone. Um, you know, we're doing our thing. And then I didn't. And then I thought very differently when I saw going clear, which is one of the first documentaries we saw to help us kind of unravel what had happened to us. And it's on our resource list, by the way, which I, I want to mention. Yeah. You guys, a little bit culty.com. You'll find everything about them, what they're doing. It's a great resource. In fact, I'm going to steal a lot of ideas from it for my website. <laughs> so no, I mean, but truly it is. And, and also I just wanted, I forgot to say this in the intro. This is how Weird. That's what I keep bringing up the pop culture thing is that I bought a cameo from you guys on the first season of The Vow for one of what? my friends. And I was like, and then I still to this day go like, did I, I bought a cameo from these people that were abused in this. <laughs> so and and they're like, hey, what's up, Nicole? How you doing? And I felt like so. And then I was like, is this bad? But I think they get the money, but I don't know. But I, and actually that was my thought. Like, I hope they're on cameo. And I was like, what a dark thought that you guys have this survivor story. And then I'm like, I wonder if they're on cameo. I'd love it's to get so a reading weird. from them. It's, it's, so weird. Yeah. it's when somebody reached out to us to, we, we waited for like a good year before we said yes. Cause we're like, that's so weird. But then we realized yeah, like who would do that. <laughs> who would do it? Like who's going to want a cameo from us anyway. And then yeah, it turned right out that like here. people really related to our story. And that's probably been the most meaningful thing is to like connect with someone who's like, yeah, I used to be Mormon. And then I saw the vow and I was just watching it. Like after the tiger King, you know, is COVID and everyone's watching the next stocky series. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I left. Jehovah's Witness, or I left an abusive relationship, or I left an acting class because of the vow. Like, yeah, that's so and the vow did a great job me. of extending us dignity, I think, and it yeah. it, it really provided a launch pad for us to <clears throat> embrace our next step. Um, yeah, and to your point about like the, the leaders and all that stuff with the ego and stuff like that, it's one of the things Sarah and I talked about. It's like whatever we do has to serve these stories; it can't serve us, you know. And I think. And you well, do that very well, actually. Well, I, you oh, know, do that very, very Thank you. Well. We yeah. try to. I mean, it's, you're never going to be perfect because, you know. We're human. We're human and all that stuff. But I think if you can stay in that lane and really hit those lessons and people walk away with more wisdom and we turn our story into content and wisdom, you know, I'll do this as long as people will listen. Do you guys have 10 more minutes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, what have you, has this helped doing the podcast has this helped in your healing process? And also we saw yeah. Nippy this season of The Vow uh, in a recorded conversation that is just being filmed from afar, just very, just very angry. And I'm sure you watched that. And I, I can't imagine watching that. You know, I don't even know if you knew you were being filmed at the time. Oh, he, recorded. He, he recorded himself. Oh, he oh, recorded himself. Oh, yeah. I was oh, like, oh, oh duh. I, I was like, I was like, who's recording? When I said you branded my yeah. fucking wife? Yes. Yeah. Like, that oh, was like, so yeah. That was you like the story the, here? No, please tell me, please oh, okay. tell us the story. Yeah. So 
there was one of those coach summits um where around the every, time we were leaving yeah and we strategized going up there knowing we were going to leave before we left i put sarah and my then three-year-old on a train to toronto 10-hour train ride by the way and i went and i went to the coach summit <laughs> business as usual i put i put my phone in my pocket and hit record and i grabbed lauren and said hey i want to talk to you about something recorded it and then jim del negro one of the guys that was one of keith's right hand man was right there and i recorded the whole thing and then i pieced out grabbed a friend of mine left and I mean, so that was like a mission impossible you knew yeah, you yeah. were going to do this and yeah. and was it also ego that they at that point were not circling the wagons to be like do not say anything to you guys do not say like you i mean like was there i always find it interesting that they did slip up in so many ways uh well, that's what no. that's ultimately yeah. what happens when you lose yeah. when you lose touch of with when you have yes people around it like yeah. you look at you look at any fall of anyone who's kind of had a fall from grace they're always surrounded by yes people they never have yeah. a no person and you talked about uh in the Eckhart episode, uh, you were he was saying like the inner circle is usually where it's the most disorganized and chaotic. Mm -hmm. And that I found such a fast because it's so true. Like I was like, yeah, like even the things that I've been a part of that have been successful, the actual inner workings are so chaotic mm -hmm. that it would just blow your mind. And I think we see a little bit of that in the vow, especially season two of him playing women off of women, mm -hmm. the collateral that he was collecting, which by the way we still do not have that. We don't have that collateral back no. according to what, right? Like that's one of the reasons why there's a lawsuit right now. Right. Because the people um, who are still loyal are holding on to the collateral and refusing. And, and I've sent some nasty texts to them in the past. <laughs> <laughs> may, may I have those nasty texts? I, I would hate to get on your bad side. Like it really, like it did. They, that's what I kind of, mm -hmm. and by the way, Sarah, is that, um, is that kind of uh, attractive when you see him uh, standing up for you like that? I, I mean, is yeah. that is there, or is it is it just like no? It's just all bad. It is no, just I love bad. I love that my husband has my back, and well, you know I, I appreciate it more than I can put words to because I can't imagine him going having gone through this alone. Well, yeah. someone's got to be the voice of outrage in society. Yeah, that's because that's I, the I, you're going to be mine from here on out. Like I'm going <laughs> well, yeah, to. You can criticize it all you want, but like the voice of outrage is normally what inspires change. No. Yeah. Well, we you, weren't allowed to be angry. That's the. And if you don't indulge thing. violence, you don't handle your problems yeah, you, with violence. Anger is a choice in Nixium, right? right? You yes. have a choice to do that or not. That's why Nancy didn't call me back when I left that angry voicemail because in her mind, I'm just having a reaction. Or they called Nippy that mic drop that you just that you just mentioned the recording. They called that his tantrum. That wasn't him having a tantrum. That was him going. That was me outsmarting you. Yeah, tantrum. That's that the was, thing is they, that they was me they outsmarting you. Yeah. They weren't they weren't circling the wagons because they didn't know what we knew. They didn't yeah. know that we were coordinated. We we well, did business. Also, with Sarah, we didn't know what was going on. Like we yeah, didn't we, know you didn't that, know you didn't know the depths of no. what was going through. Yeah, Ryan, you have to understand. We got dragged into this fight by Claire Bronfman when she went out flew out to Vancouver to have my wife arrested. So they escalated. It was an arms race at that point. We didn't have many resources. We had to take $10,000 that we didn't have, hire a lawyer just to defend ourselves. Once this thing got real and we got on the cover of New York Times, I don't know that we would have gone to the New York Times had we not been forced to escalate, but we were forced mm -hmm. to play our hand. And our hand was that. And once we did that, you know, we didn't know that it was a blowout, right? We just yeah. thought. We just thought we were finding these little rumblings and we weren't sure what was done wrong. We didn't have all the information. We didn't know the years and decades of abuse to the extent of it. And once all that came out within about six to eight months of us being on the cover of New York Times, we had a awareness that we are the least of their problems. Yeah, I mean, because you had the Catherine Oxenberg, you had all of these things, like all of these people then coming yeah. together. Like, I just remember the first dateline I had seen about it, I think was the first time I'd even heard about Nixium. Um, also, may I ask, like, this is a very personal question. Don't uh, you don't have to answer it. But like, was there ever a point where it was like, this might not work as a relationship? Or were you guys always uh, solid with each other in terms of your marriage? I, I mean, I think that we, you know, we had our three year old, you know, and that put us put things into perspective really quickly. I think there, there were some fights, you know, at the beginning when we were very, very stressed that like, you know, there was words said, but you know, as soon as <laughs> <laughs> like in a, wait, a, do you mean like in an actual relationship? Like an actual like <laughs> relationship. I can't, you know, this is, a, this is a, 
you know, ups and downs. We've been through major, major ups and downs. So actually one of the positive things of having the podcast together is that we're doing something cathartic to answer your question. Yes. That's your date earlier. night is the podcast. It is. That well, is your date like, night. It's a very positive thing that we're bringing together. And it's like, there were many years when we were just like hashing shit out and like, you know, getting people out over the phone and it was very stressful and there wasn't a lot of connection. And now we have time to do that. I, I can't imagine doing this without Nippy. Like we're, we are a solid, solid team. Look, really I, are. I said, I said in one interview not long ago, if you had told me for five years from the incident that my biggest problems would be getting my kids to school on time and still waiting for Sarah to get to the car on time. <laughs> And those are my two problems in five years. I'd take it. I'd take yeah, it. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, it worked out all right then. I, I thought we were going to be in litigation, fighting this for whatever. And, you know, now we're on the upside. We've turned a negative in, into a positive. And we're you truly did. Like, in. that's what I'm saying. This podcast, you guys, a little bit culty once again. And I'm going to keep talking about it all week. Uh, but it is something that I know my listeners will like because you think Real Housewives and all these reality shows we watch are a little bit kooky, a little bit crazy, a little bit culty themselves but actually go into real life scenarios the, you know, real life is always going to trump anything that Bravo can put on TV. <laughs> and also it can be really helpful because you want to know what to watch out for, for yourself, for your family, for, you know, these things pop up everywhere. There's just three more things that I wanted to ask from you guys. Uh, uh, Kanye West. Um, now that is very, you know, a lot of people, even before his most recent um, outbursts, uh, which are disgusting and horrific. Uh, you know, Sunday service was something. And he they said, Kanye is starting a cult. He is starting a cult. I don't know if you ever paid attention to any of that or if that was on your radar. It, it was on our radar a little bit. And I, to be honest, I haven't even, we've just been so busy with the vow to even follow what's happened. I know it's, I know it's happening, but I haven't like researched it thoroughly to have a, but what I will say is that somebody like Kanye is like what Nippy said earlier, when you get to that level of super stardom, you have everyone around you. It's like David Miscavige in Scientology. Like everyone's saying yes and bowing down to you. No one's saying, hey, I don't think that's, maybe that's not a good idea. Like maybe we should dial that back or whatever. Like he doesn't have that. So yeah, there's no, no men. It's all yes. No, no and, and, and so, it also yeah. undermines what potentially he has to, to say that's astute. So he's put himself into the Alex Jones territory, right? Where like now you're, you're sounding like a blowhard, you're coming from a place that isn't very principled. It's hate, and yeah. you're, you're just gonna lose. You're gonna well, lose. And also, you can't say like you can't say hateful things and then go, yeah. "But this is love." Like he'll literally yeah. go, "But all love," but then he'll say something really hateful. And I always find that interesting. And also interesting if you know you believe in God and you believe in a higher power. That I'm like, isn't the higher power at this point of like you are really abusing the power that I've given you? Like yeah. this is like well, this is wild. <laughs> Um, uh, the other one more, one more cat, one more caveat to that too. It's, you know, one of the things I don't like seeing going on the media and there's a cult of media going on is that they're, they're taking comedians, athletes, and entertainers and taking them to the mat and holding them accountable more so than they are our politicians. Isn't and that I wild? Think I think that's a distraction. You know, lower your expectations for your entertainers, lower your expectations for your athletes. Cause well, they're, I don't they're think not my social, yeah. I don't no, think my no, social cues yeah. from housewives. They yeah. don't tell me how to treat totally. people like my parents <laughs> totally. did. You know? And I, and uh, I think as it comes to wait, Kanye more West, more there, there's more, no, 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 no. There's no, more things to be upset yeah. about than what Kanye West, Kyrie Irving, Alex Jones, and these people who have entertainment things are, are saying. I think there's more things in your purview that you could, you could be outraged about. And it would make I mean, the cult of difference. politics. Yeah. The cult sure. of politics, politics is like the big, I mean, sure. seeing what happened in America and, this and they're last, taking I mean, your money. <laughs> like, that's what, you know? I mean, I just you know, want so. the emails to stop. Why do you need money still? And the, the election's text over messages. And I'm getting, it's, I thought <laughs> it's it was popular nuts. for a second. Okay. Um, the one thing I wanted to recommend to you guys, and this actually falls into religion and politics is a new documentary on Hulu called God forbid. I don't know if you've heard of this, heard of it, not watched heard it. of it, heard you of guys it. gotta watch it, but it's okay. all about Jerry Falwell jr. And yes. Liberty university and the evangelicals, but talked about how they would actually test market things like, uh, uh, anti-abortion or this, and like what would actually bring in money. And it was like, just, I thought you guys would find it especially fascinating because it's has starts with like a tawdry thing about Jerry Falwell wanting to watch this kid sleep with his wife. And then it pulls back and gets the history of evangelism in there. But I was like, you guys would knock, uh, the Billy Corbin's the director. I was like, Oh, please talk to him. Lastly, oh, we'll Billy always, Corbin's we'll a director. Always, wow. always accept. Yeah. Um, Billy Corbin did Cocaine wow. Cowboys on Netflix. And, wow. uh, but you should, you I mean, I don't, 
I, I, I can pass along. Yeah, I can pass along his information after this. Okay, but I think you guys would have a really interesting conversation. Um, and then finally, I talk to housewives on the night their shows air or any celebrity, and I'm like, do you, are you guys on a text chain? Like, do you are you on a text chain with all of the other with Mark and all of these <laughs> yeah. guys on Monday nights when the vow airs? You know, there used to be so many of those. Like when we when we left Nexium, I think I deleted over 60 text change for all the there different groups nuts. that we had, like WhatsApp groups for the Proctor things and the and the senior yeah. Proctor and the goals thing and the executive board and the commerce board. So I deleted so many things, but ultimately for many, many years we had like a rebels, the rebels text thread, and it was like Catherine, Mark, Bonnie, myself, Nippy. Um, and then like slowly that changed and kind of people went their own ways, but um, me and Mark and Nippy talk a lot and we, we, we communicate with different people here and there from the vow more. I think the community aspect is sort of broken to be honest, but we we're in, we're in touch with a lot of people. Which is sometimes an okay thing. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it's, 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 sorry. It's lastly, uh, uh the, yeah, yeah. the verdict, the verdict, Keith is in, in prison. He will be there supposedly for 120 years. I believe that, that was his sentencing. Yes. Do you feel that was fair and just, should he have gotten more? Um, and also what did you think about like Nancy's sentencing and Lauren, Lauren, I believe just has, um, uh, home arrest probation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nancy four and a half years, I believe, three and um, a half, three, three, something. And a half? Yeah. Yeah. three, something. Uh, and Alice and Max still, we don't, what did she get? Generally, I think our consensus is we really trust, uh, Allison was it's about three as well. She's in prison at the moment. Um, but we, we really trust the judge. We feel like he feel like he's got a good sense of who is perpetrator, who's a victim and perpetrator, who is, uh, you know, a menace to society who woke up. Like the fact that Claire is in prison because she didn't wake up. She didn't renounce Keith. She's still funding Keith legal bills. I mean, she would have a very different sentence if she'd been like, wow, I made a mistake. Keith's a, you know, a sociopath, but no, she yeah, not. None of this happens without Keith Ranieri. Yeah, he's the lynchman. Yeah. I mean, that, that is, that that's is why he got so much time. And that's why and you I, take him out of the equation. I think everyone else can go back to normal lives. And I don't believe, like, I just hate that, like, these, you read about prison fan mail. I bet I, I'm like, just, I'm imagining the abuse he's even doing in jail, just in prison, like pal handwriting. Like, I just feel like this stuff never stops if he is the man who I believe that he is through everything he, I've he read. He won't and seen. stop. He, he won't, won't stop. Because what's he going to do? I mean, he's got. A, that's all he has. Now. Years. Like, that's, it's not going to get his worse. His skill set is lying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is wild. And now to see how he can use that against him. And I felt bad for those poor prisoners because I'm like, first off, Huge for the volleyball community for prison, you know, like, I mean, that's mm -hmm. probably going to be huge. But secondly, what's he doing to the prisoners in there? What is he doing? To, you You know, like this thing doesn't stop just because he got put in jail. He's getting his ass kicked is what's going on. I hope yeah. so. I mean, no, he I, is. I he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's spending 23 of 24 hours in a special housing unit. One day of walking and, and one hour of outside of it to walk and. Oh, yeah, well, good, 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 good. Yeah. Karma's um, a bitch. Because he's trying to do things like that. He's filing um, all these motions against the prison system, against the legal the system. It's just all this. I love our legal system and I love it. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. Sarah and Nippy, uh, you can tell I'm big fans of yours. Not oh, only, you. I mean, the story you went through is just harrowing and brave and all of these kind of amazing things. But at the same time, the podcast, just as a podcaster, you guys, I really highly, highly recommend this. Like I have the whole hour and like I've done many times before. I think this is, I'm sure you guys were wondering why I even asked you to do this being the kind of podcast I was, but I think there's so much crossover here in terms of what our interests are, you guys. And yes. I believe their podcast, like I, you know, and I got to I feel proud when I listen to their podcast. I'm like, look what I did. I did something good <laughs> with my day and I learned something with my day and I learned what to stay away from. And I learned about people's stories that aren't housewives. And I feel like I did something. So what do we always do? We subscribe right now. We take a second. It's the quickest That's thing awesome. you can do. And then we do five stars immediately because you know, it's going to be good because I wouldn't ask people on this that suck. And I know that sounds silly, but it's the easiest, freest thing that you can do to support your fellow podcaster or somebody that you enjoy listening to. I mean, and this is like something I feel very comfortable in recommending. You did me such a favor in joining us. And thank you so much for not canceling this, this <laughs> again. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> because I truly, I just wanted to say how important you had been to this last couple of years. Wow. And I hate, I like talk about enjoyments from what you've had to go through or what you talk about, but I do get, um, uh, I guess I do enjoy learning from you guys. 
and well, I hope that's, that's okay. <laughs> that, that's great truly. because the, the biggest concern was our personalized becoming other people's entertainment. And I wanted to make sure it became a, a, a lesson. Yeah, yeah. Like you rose so, above that and now yeah. you act. That's what I say. It's so cool that you get your flowers now and that people <laughs> are actually coming to you yeah. and for, for something that has nothing. Like we, we talked about the vow, but like, that's what I love is that this podcast there's Val stuff in there. There's Nixium stuff in there because of your experience, but you get to learn so much more. Turns out there's a lot of scary groups out there and there's mm -hmm. a lot of survivors. And I think we need to celebrate that every day. So the podcast is a little bit culty and hopefully I'll get to cross paths with you guys yeah, at some other be, point. Oh, Same love here, it. Ryan. Are but you not in, in like a cult. Yeah. I'm in Los Angeles. Yeah. West Hollywood. But I, uh, are you, uh, if you ever, yeah, if you ever, if you ever want to hang out, I would if love you guys to wanna be friends. Let's be I friends. I would love to. I, I would absolutely love to. <laughs> Um, okay, I will. I'll talk to you guys next time.